What's going on guys? Ren here with another build video for you and we're going to bust out a couple of these today. But the AC that you see before you, I have named Star Chaser. And it's my attempt at something that's a little bit of a high damage, long range sniper. And something that I built because I wanted, a lot of my builds lean into 1v1s. And I wanted something that could do a little bit better in 3v3s. As well as you just don't see a ton of tetrapods in play, so I wanted to lean into that as well. So this is Star Chaser. And with that, let's jump into the build. Starting out with our arm weapons, we have the Nebula Rifles, dual nebulas. You could shift over to something like the Redshift, but once you're firing from, what is it, I think it's 3, 460. 460 is the effective range on the nebulas. So once you're firing in that like 3, 400, 500 range, the projectile speed on the plasma rifles is so slow that it's actually really difficult to hit anything. But you can see there that the nebulas, the range on its charged attack, that blast radius, is just massive. Um, so the nebulas have a way bigger blast radius than the red shifts. So we're using them mostly so we can hit things with that giant blast radius from a distance. Moving into the back weapons, we have dual facades. It's really the only long range plasma cannon option we've got. Um, you could certainly go more into like a laser cannon build, um, but this is a plasma cannon build specifically. And again, they have that blast radius, not quite as big as the nebulas, but they have that uh, large blast radius that helps us hit at a distance because it's quite difficult for just a direct shot. Moving into the frame, we have the 44B. This is my head of choice for anything that's super long range, so I definitely had to go for it here. For the core, we have the ephemera. The generator output adjustment is quite nice. You can see our energy load is just absolutely massive, um, and so this will up the, uh, uh, the energy output of the generator up the final value of that um, and we pretty much are at max e and load holding all of these plasma cannons um, and some of our parts are a little bit drainy too so we're going in with the ephemeras arms we need something super accurate at a distance so it's got to be the noctrayer that max firearm specialization there leg wise i wanted to this to be as light of a quad leg as i could get while firing these you know giant four plasma cannons at a distance so we actually are quite heavy but i wanted something that would have just a good boost speed um, so you do see you, can, you drop down a little bit if you go with the barrels you don't really need the extra weight um, it's an option but i like the 424s here moving into the boosters we have the uh one two three four fives which is just ridiculous. Um, development under intoxicating influences, indeed. Um, but regardless, these have a really high quick boost ideal weight at 97,000. You can see we're actually quite heavy at 91,000. So there's not a ton of... This actually might be the only thing... Okay, so the, the Burzels can do it as well. It gives you a little bit more thrust, a little bit more upwards thrust. But it does put us an in shortfall. So that is really the reason we're using the one, two, three, fours, um, is because of that Ian shortfall. You may could shift out your arms to something less accurate, change your head out. You could probably make these work, but with the both the quick boost ideal weight and our energy drain, there really isn't another option besides these. Moving into the FCS, we've got the 21A with that max long range assist, a little bit of medium range assist in there. You could probably shift it into like the 21B if you wanted to lean more into that medium range. I'm using this as much as I can from a distance, um, so I really wanted to go with that and do the 21As. Generator-wise, we're using the NGI triple zero. So here's the thing. I know this is a divisive generator. Um, I put out a video on how to use these things exactly, and it's been uh, very divisive. People either love them or absolutely hate them. You do have to fully drain yourself to get a decent charge out of these guys, but when it happens about three seconds or so in, and you'll get like 70% of your energy back, 60, 70%. Um, so they're great in that regards. Our energy load is so incredibly high on this build that even if we go with something else that can support all of the in load, um, which it's a, it's a pretty rare generator that can, the charge time is gonna be terrible. 
Um, so it's such a high E in load, the charge time, even if we could fit on another generator, is going to be absolutely awful. This also gives us a little bit more energy output to do things like change to the Noctrayer arms to equip that head, things like that. Um, and you'll see there's almost nothing else we can use. We can use the 20D, but its firearm specialization is less. Um, the energy capacity is less. And again, getting that energy recharge on the generator isn't going to do anything really for us because our EN load is just so incredibly high. And there's almost nothing else we can use. It's really the choice of just those two, the 20D um, or the NGI. So we're going to go the NGI with this one. Expansion slot wise, we're going to go with Pulse Armor. And this is because it resets that attitude stability and it um, it just lets us get away, right? So if they get up on top of us, we can pulse armor and try to get out of there. It gives us a little bit of defense if we ca get caught out in a bad spot when our generator is down. So pulse armor was the way to go for me. You could definitely go assault armor, that same concept of if somebody gets right up on top of you, you do have an out. Um, we're hovering so slowly that terminal armor doesn't really seem to do a whole lot here. I think it's more effective on things like missile boats or things that can do a ton of damage right when that pulse armor kicks in. Um, that pulse uh, terminal armor, excuse me, right when that terminal armor kicks in. So pulse armor really seems to be the play here. You could certainly go assault. But with that, we're going to go ahead and jump into some matches. And we'll probably do a couple of singles and a 3v3. Okay, so we're going to jump into our first match here. We have the Zimmerman Moonlight. And then there's Needle Missiles. Super meta, super painful. Hopefully we can uh, keep away enough to not really be an issue with that Zimmerman. Well, I want to be an issue. Hopefully they won't be an issue. Let's go ahead and start charging our hands here. And there they are. Hopefully we can get them on the ground here. And you can see it's actually quite difficult to hit at a distance with these guys. So we're going to scoot in just a little. Okay, and he, the nice thing is he can't really hit us with that red ship. He's relying on the needle missiles. Up and away. And I choose that stagger opportunity to build some distance rather than actually capitalize on it. And away again. Oh, that hurts. Not a ton of ammo either. We're about to drop. And he got us on that one. yeah, you can see it's actually quite difficult um, to hit with these guys at range. Try to do it on the ground so you can get that bubble. Oh, just missed punishing that. Okay, warm up's over. Got that. Going way better this time. There we go. So way quicker, that second phase. Just had to get warmed up, get my timing down. But yeah, if you hit the, the nebula on the ground, it's way better. If they're in flight, it tends to pass them, and then it'll just explode on the ground um, regardless. Let's go up a little bit more. But if you can get it while they're on the ground, it'll blow up on the ground. And do all of that beautiful stagger damage. You 
can just see how much it builds up there. And the bubble, whoop. Go ahead and pop that terminal armor. And we're gonna actually boost away, drain down our generator, and let it recharge. There we go. You can see that cloud it leaves actually continues to do stagger damage. And that's super important. As soon as he comes up over the hill, not worried about those missiles. As soon as he goes down, we're going to try to get him there. And he's going to go back down here in a second when we're going to try to get him there. Lots of, lots of stagger buildup. There we go. We didn't even have to get the, uh, the stagger on him. They do a ton of damage, too, if they hit. So that match, mostly using my back weapons as a punisher and really trying to hit with those nebulas. But let's go ahead and jump into another one. Oh, a pile dual Zimmermans. This will be interesting. I don't know. I mean, he's got some verticality, so he might be able to get up to us. We'll have to see how he plays it. Let's get some height. I'm actually going to float over here to this building, and we're going to drop down and recharge our generator. There he is. Use that huge scan distance. Not so he'd jump up for that Zimmerman shot. There's the punish. And that should stagger him and down. If you really want to go anti-Zimmerman, if you're just over them entirely, just do something with long-range laser weapons. Something either fast or floaty. There seems to be not a whole lot they can really do about it. And again, this guy's got a little bit of verticality to him. He's going to try to use the buildings to get over to me. Don't love that. That long distance shot. Grenade for days. And that should. St we're gonna get the stagger? Nope, he didn't stay in the cloud long enough. That's fine. And there's the stagger, there's the punish. Did this miss? We're gonna recover here in case he decides he wants to come in on us. He's going to use that opportunity to capitalize. Can't say I blame him. Just going to peck at him with our backs here for a second. Hopefully we can get some nebula on him. And all it's going to take is like one direct shot here. Yeah, to really finish him off. Oh, he got me. I got him too. Wait, did I get him too? Is he still alive? He did. How much AP did you have? So that was probably one him, him getting used to fighting me as well as just semi mismanaged energy on my part, perhaps. Go. Oh, I was hoping we could land some of those. We're going to try to build some distance here. Oh, yeah. Got him. And if you're wondering what happened there, I think it was really just the cloud that the nebulas leave behind, gradually damaging him. But that's why the armor is important too, um, so it can save us while we rebuild our energy. 
Okay, so we're going to jump into our 3v3 here. Still half the lobby, loader fours. It just bothers me on a deep, irrational level. Name your AC. Something other than loader four. I suppose it's not all that intuitive, though. I keep joking about making the uh, the guide to it, but honestly, I maybe I just should. Maybe I'll do that later today. We'll see. See what kind of time we've got. What are we up against here? There's me. We have stun guns on our end and a heavy, explodey close range tank. What if the wheelchair legs would be better for that? We got orbits, missile boat, close range missiles, and double coral missiles, long range rifles. We each have a floaty long range quad, but whew, those double coral missiles are going to hurt. To stay towards the back lines here, ideally. Okay, so this guy is. There we go. Waiting for somebody to come in on him. Oh, that hurts. Go ahead and let our energy recharge here. We're all gonna move in on number one. Guys, you got somebody behind you. get it not just yet ah uh, was hoping to maybe get a kick in on him no such luck honestly not a whole lot of deaths in general on this round Uh, for everybody. Oh. There we go. Dagger on this tank. Staggered behind the wall though. Go in at number one here. Almost like two directly below me. There you go. Alright, let's get him. A little AoE there on that. Yep, time to recharge here. Oh. If we can stagger that. Almost, there we go. We should just melt him. Nope. Armor doesn't matter. I use this opportunity just to recharge real quick. Oh. There we go.
Oh, man. Just a constant barrage of missiles just holding me in place. And it is hard. I do a lot of AoE damage. I do a lot of stagger damage. Um, even to multiple opponents. But it doesn't do a massive amount of like direct hit kind of kill shot damage. So it's more, I guess, supportive um, in 3v3 in that regard. Somewhere there's a missile boat. Can we melt him before time is up? I don't think so. Nope. The 329. Definitely not the top of the pack, but again, more more supportive. It doesn't get in there and really do that direct hit damage. But regardless, that is going to be the build. So tell me what you guys think in the comments. Um, again, the paint scheme, schematic, all of that good stuff is available to the YouTube channel members in my Discord. And I'll see you next time.